So we're going to look into measuring the signal to noise ratio of a Schmidt trigger based stochastic resonator. Uh, I suggest just watching this all the way through because um, it could help uh, you take better measurements and maybe not quite feel so lost. This is an analog system and rather than biasing it at a stable point, um, we're actually in effect picking an operational point of the Schmidt trigger that is the most unstable regime of the Schmidt trigger which is right in the middle of the hysteresis curve and finding that uh, can be a little difficult so in the tutorial you load in the noise file and we're going to start off with an amplitude of one or a scaling of one and a sample rate of 50 uh, kilo samples per second and this offset here is what you measured when you were measuring the hysteresis width. Um, and it might not be the exact best number to use, but it's a lot better, uh, closer than anything else. And we're going to choose one so that it, it, uh, we can see the output triggering um, no matter what. Then I'll show you how to find the smallest uh, amplitude that'll work. So it's already running. We go to the oscilloscope and you can see that the output is going from high to low. Um, and it kind of looks like, well, let's see, what is it measuring? The mean is, uh, you know, bouncing around 2.5. So it's kind of saying that it's on the same amount that it's off, which is kind of what we want. Now, um, but let's see what the smallest value is that this will work for. All right, so let's try 0.7. And it's still working. All right. Um, the mean, of course, is bouncing around quite a bit. Uh, we could actually measure... We don't want horizontal, we want vertical, and we'll just measure this. Not quite sure why it's choosing the wrong one. I think I need to update my scoping. I'm just going to let it be rather than deal with it. Because you can, if we lower it, the if we make this smaller, the num the percentage of the time that will make a trigger goes down, and we should see it slow down. All right. And, um, you know, the mean now is saying that it's a little bit higher. All right. If I lower it even more, we can see that it is, in fact, spending most of its time Let's see if I can get 450 to work. All right. And now it's very obvious. All right. And you can analyze it, but it just won't, won't be as accurate. So what we need to do to get it to kind of trigger 50% of the time high, 50% of the time low, is move the noise uh, up or down. So... This was a good starting point, but let's raise it up. And I turned it off. Okay. Let me raise it down. And now it's high. Um, I'm just going to increase the noise a little bit and go back to two. And now uh, it's spending most of its time low. Oops. I 
actually going to go back to my original 2462. That's a little high. And that's about as good as I think as I can get it by eye. And it's also bouncing around. Let me try. Yeah, I think it's just we're right in the middle of it. And we're actually doing 500, which is pretty good. 400, I believe it will stop. Oh, it's still getting something. Um, but it's just really not enough data. And also, it could be the noise source repeats, so that's what we could be seeing. So it's better to have it go a little faster. We increase the speed by increasing the RMS value of the noise through the amplitude. All right. So here we have a spot at 450. All right. So. Export it. And this will, this file will change wherever you've saved it. All right. And we'll run this. And um, we can see here is the background noise curve fit. And we're measuring this peak to that. That's our signal to noise ratio. It's a little bit above, so it is detecting. The F peak happens to be around 925. Uh, it really should be about 1,000. All right. So in the other experiments, we really we start at 500. And there we go. This this signal has been measured, the sine wave, to be 1,025. For my setup, you might have a little bit different setting. So that's the peak um, that we'll be watching. The signal-to-noise ratio is 2, right? But still, it's uh, not you know, very strong for that level of noise. If we want to look at it with the spectrum analyzer, let it calculate. You can see this, there's still a lot of noise everywhere, even though we are getting a peak right here. Now this is the FFT, right? You can see it bouncing around and we've got spikes which is almost similar to this, which is the frequency power spectrum. It's in frequency, but this has been um, squared to get power and then averaged with like kind of a moving average to smooth it out, right? And then we curve fit this Lorentzian, right? But it's, it's kind of the same information we're looking that right there means there's a sine wave that we're trying to detect and we're trying to get it uh, by adding noise we'll get to detect it better anyway the signal to noise ratio was 1.96 so we come over to our file um, you could have measured one doesn't really matter, but we're on 0.5. So that is, oh, no, signal to noise ratio is 1.6. And the RMS, I'm just grabbing all of that, is here. OK. And so 
you'll get a slightly different reading every time you do this, right? Um, just because of the finite amount of data that the it can store. So I just do it again. Run Python again. All right. And you know, before it was 0.051, now it's 0.055. Okay. Signal to noise ratio 2.88. And we do it one more time. Now, over time, we could look at it and decide, you know, maybe we don't really need those those three measurements, All right? But for right now, to get consistent results. Okay, so this would be the average standard deviation, the average of the signal-to-noise ratio, standard deviation. And it gives you an idea of how close things are, all right? Now, once all this is filled out, right, then there's another uh, file. So you've got it all done, and you have exported this file, and you run it, and you should get this, right? And notice it's also plotting these error bars, which is the standard deviation. The file's all been set up for you, all right? But we were just working on, well, that's just to make sure that you realize that we're not plotting this. This is the setting on Scopy, right? We're plotting the average uh, RMS. So 0 0.05 and change, right? And so 0 0.05 and change, that's about there. And notice that it's got a larger um, standard deviation, right? And as we go higher. And yeah, there's some strange things that sometimes the data points, you've increased things, right? You've increased this, but then somehow the... Uh, It creates, sorry, it creates a smaller theta. So even though I've increased V peak to peak, the theta comes back. Um, and it's, this happens. Now, I just don't want to delete the data points because it really happens. But it is important, too, to go from the small to large. Because if you go from large to small, it'll be slightly different. But the thing is, is the peak, right, is within this regime, right, that the best noise is between 0.15 and 0.2, right, and everything else will be lower, right. But yeah, this is, this is telling you that this is the noise VP from the uh, Scopy, and this is the RMS, and you can see that it's not perfectly linear. And right here, it even dropped, all right? And if we do the full width half maximum, either, uh, you know, it might have dropped here a little, but it's very consistent, right? Um, anyway, that's it. Um, you do have to, you might have to tweak it a bit. I think part of the tweaking I did before I started the video is because I forgot to calibrate Scopy. So yeah, I just unplug the wires from the 
M2K, do a calibrate, and then do my testing, right? Um, it is a rather sensitive measurement, but I would not... I would calibrate it and then take all and then take all the measurements for that one experiment. But with that signal to noise ratio curve, right? And then I did the the second part first, and with this video, right, we can determine this tells you yes, it's a stochastic resonator because we can get an exponential fit and find the well depth. And this ooh, this finds the peak um, in the, the RMS noise. That tells you, you know, you can get uh, eight signal-to-noise ratio. That's it.